Right, let's kick it off. Now, today we present you another opportunity to deepen your understanding with our weekly conversations on the upcoming referendum. Now, if you've been confused by the split on the front of our political parties and our chiefs, uh, well, there's uh, some opportunity um, uh, today to help you make a decision before the 17th of December. Yesterday, the governing NPP extended a hand of friendship to the NDC uh, in supporting the proposal, uh, calling on them to support the proposal to allow politics uh, at the local level of governments. Uh, we will hear from the two parties shortly. First, though, a fresh opinion on the matter. Executive Director of the Institute of Democratic Governance, Dr. Emmanuel Aquiti, speaking at a forum in Accra on the matter, said this. We should put pressure for them to find, you know, the common ground and let's go through this process because it would open the door. You need to open the door first. That is the constitution procedure. Um, I think if you seriously look at uh, the other side of the picture where people have said, wow, if parties come to the districts, okay, are they not going to do what they do all the time? Dominate, not listen to people and all that. But imagine 260 districts now made elective posts, okay? Where you compete, different parties, individuals and all. It is going to take the pressure we put on the presidency, which makes it do or die. Because you may not win the presidency, but you may control, win a number of districts and you're an executive government and you sit with the president. I've heard somebody say, look, sabotage. In this system, you can sabotage at your own uh, peril. The president is a unitary state, the president is still in charge. After all, the executive arm is the sphere of the president. But now the only post in the executive arm for the last 27 years that parties compete for is president one. Now, Ivor Greenstreet of the CPP says that his party supports a yes vote. I believe that there are reasons why the largest opposition party originally felt it was yes. So uh, they should determine and find out why they have moved from that yes position to a no position and convince them in, with the force of their argument why it should be yes. What does the CPP think? The, CPP, the highest body of the CPP held a meeting uh, throughout our, our former manifestos, we had always been for yes for the election of um, uh, MMDCEs. However, as you know, the only difference on this occasion is that they are adding the fact that it should be partisan at the local level. In fact, just before even coming here, I spoke to the former MP of Kumbungu, uh, who, as you know, is a CPP man. The seat was held by the CPP. And I asked him directly, Moses, uh, you can best assess what would be best for the party in Kumbungu. And he made it very clear to me that a yes vote would be in the interest of the party. It would be far easier at the local level for us to get representation and people to participate if uh, the elections took place on a partisan line. And he's at the local level, so I think we have to believe him, we have to trust him, and I think this is the case throughout the country. So, so the CPP will support a yes vote? I think the, the national leadership have made it clear, they held a meeting, it is for a yes vote. However, you can see that if the vote took place today, uh, it would be no. And getting close to December 17th, it looks like it will still be a no. I don't know what the record is of people who come out to even vote at the district assembly elections. I think normally it's even 20%. Mm. Now 40% are required to come out and vote. Out of that 40%, 40 75% are supposed to say yes. I think it's a very difficult task, a very tall order. The likelihood is that no will prevail. The NEC cited monetization and polarization of Ghana's policies as the reasons they wouldn't support, um, uh, they wouldn't support a yes vote. What would, what's the CPP saying about some of the reasons that NEC has given that our, our politics is already polarized and we can't afford to take this to the district level? Well, I think it is, it is the MPP and the NDC who are specialists at monetization. And they have rather introduced that into our body politic over the last 26 or 27 years. That is why Ghanaians are tired of them. 
and the, the Ghanaians, wherever you go, say they are tired of MPP and NDC. That is because they know they are the ones who are behind the monetization. They know they are the ones who are behind, behind the divisions. They know they are the ones who are um, a serial and repetitive um, a corruption specialists. And so they are tired of them. Um, uh, and we are also tired of them. But we have to become stronger, more organized, and more united to uh, demonstrate to Ghanaians that we are a, a better alternative. Right, so look, let's, let's get started. In the studio with us is Al Haji Mohammed Awal Al Hassan. Now, this is a citizens' conversation put together by Joy News and the Ghana Journalists Association. And today, we're treating the realities of this matter for the people of Ghana as we head for the referendum. You can join us too. The conversation is alive on WhatsApp, and of course, we would love to have your views. And before we start, Let's hear from the NDC and the NPP on this matter. First, the NDC's national chairman, Samuel Fusampofu. Then we'll hear from NPP's general secretary, John Buidu. Chairman of the party, Samuel Fusampofu, said Ghana is already divided on partisan lines. According to him, the one thing that binds Ghanaians is the local governance system, which is run on non partisan basis and therefore is able to rally all citizens for development. At the meeting, held last Thursday, the neck of the NDC affirmed our long-held position that MMDCs should be elected. We, however, took the view that the local governance system should remain non-partisan and that individual, individuals contest the elections, the disassembly elections and unit committee elections on their own merits. We therefore decided to campaign for no vote at the referendum and to urge all Ghanaians to vote no at the referendum. It is our, our well-considered view, and indeed that of well-meaning Ghanaians, that the needless NDC-MPP polarization at the national level should not be extended into the district assemblies and unit committees, which is what will happen if we vote to make the local government system partisan. The party is also citing the cost of electing candidates as one of the reasons it is kicking against the yes vote. Our parties will have to sponsor about 7,000 of their members to participate in the assembly election. And in the unit committee, about 35,000, because for every electoral area, we have five unit committee members who are to be sponsored by the political parties. Do, we, do the political parties have the needed resources, the money? And you remember that if you want to get people into this position, then it requires that you are going to do primaries to uh, elect members to represent you. And you are doing primaries in 7,000 electoral areas and 35,000 unit committee members. The NDC is also accusing President Ikufuado and some state institutions of deliberately misleading the public to vote yes. A notice put out by the EC saying, among others, that the referendum is to approve or reject the provision of whether MMDCs are to be voted for or not is palpably falsehood. The government was deliberately misleading people into believing that the referendum is to elect MMDCs, knowing that the election of MMDCs is the people's preference. No less a personality than the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adedanko Akufuado himself, made this false claim last week. In fact, the NCC should have called out the President for peddling misinformation and untruth. The Constitutional Amendment Bill 2008 has many ramifications for the smooth, effective, and harmonious administration of the Metropolitan and District Assemblies. It has to be thought through very well. Unfortunately, the bill as it is now, the bill as it is now, is fatally flawed and cannot form the basis for the referendum to amend 55-3. It must be withdrawn. But if the government insists on making the assemblies partisan, then a new bill must be drafted, regazetted and subject to serious scrutiny by Ghanaians. 
Former local government and rural development minister Kwamina Ahoy says election of MMDC on partisan lines is not the cure for the winner takes all phenomenon. Why do you think that it is the local only the local government system that can stop the winner takes all? You can have a constitution that says that a certain number of ministers must be appointed from the opposition. And in any case, when we were fighting for... Uh, we'll hear more in a moment, but we need to bring you this because it's happening as we speak. Uh, my colleague, Kwesi Parker Wilson, is at the NDC headquarters because an NDC member of parliament has been summoned there by the party for supporting the yes vote in Parliament. Let's hear from him. Uh, Kwesi, can you hear me? I can hear you, Kujo. There you are. Now, I understand that Ras Mubarak is the MP at the centre of this controversy. What can you tell us? That's correct, uh, Kujo. I can report to our viewers that the member of Parliament for Kumbungu, Ras Mubarak, has been summoned by the Functional Executive Committee of the NDC. He just arrived at the party headquarters. In fact, just before he arrived, my source had told me that a message has been conveyed to the minority leader, Hayona Idrisi, to inform Rasmussen to suspend all activities in parliament and show himself at the party headquarters. What is the reason, Kojo? It is quite simple. Rasmussen yesterday, when he spoke to us on Joy FM uh, uh, Newsnight, advocated a yes vote as far as the referendum is concerned. And you know that the party has taken a position that they are campaigning for a no vote because of some issues and concerns they have with the whole process. So if a member of the party goes against the decision of the party, he has to be stumbled. So I spoke to the general secretary of the party on record, that is um, Johnson Asadin Katia, who told me that Rasenberg has been invited to come and brief the Functional Executive Committee, bring clarity on his statement. They don't believe in ESA, even though some executives have said that they heard him speak on Joy FM. They want to hear from him whether indeed he still stands by his position. Now, if he says he still stands by his position and he's found guilty, he's likely to be suspended, he's likely to be expelled, or he's likely to be cautioned. So the General Secretary, told me that they want to listen to him first. And when they are done, then they will pass their judgment on his conduct. Mm. Now, he came in the company of some leadership in parliament. I can mention um, Honorable Samuel Blackwa, Peter Blackwa is here. Uh, Honorable Peter Nochu is here. Pamia Buja is here. Uh, Muntaka Mubarak is here. Uh, Benjamin Todo is also here. So these are leadership in parliament that brought Rustenberg to the party headquarters to meet the Functional Executive Committee and explain his posture and conduct as far as his position on the referendum is concerned. So they just entered the meeting a while ago. I am told that they were spending just about an hour with a few interrogations. And when they are done, the party will now pass their judgment whether or not to suspend him, to expel him, or caution him on, on, on what he did. Right. Now, what do we know about his position? What has he espoused? What is his argument? Well, you, you know that the NDC has been very clear as far as the December 17 referendum is concerned. That for them, there were quite a number of issues with the referendum because they will not cure. The winner takes all. And that the introduction of the 55-3 is not necessarily even electing member, uh, MMDC, but also assembly members as well, which also have issues with. And so the party said that the NPP has failed to broadly consult stakeholders, and stakeholders include political parties in the country, the NDC, PPP, CPP, and because of that, the NDC has taken the view of the position that they are going for a no vote in the referendum. And that is the party's uh, uh, position. And the party issued a three-line whip to all members of parliament that that should also be their position. So just yesterday, Rasul Bakran, we spoke to him on Newsnight, said that for him, as an individual and also member of parliament on the ticket of the NDC in the Kumbogo constituency, would go for a year's vote, which contrary, um, um, is, is contrary to the party's position, mm. which the party frowns on, because the constitution, the party's constitution is clear that if you go against the party, you must be sanctioned. 
And that is why he's been brought to the Functional Executive Committee to explain himself. And when he's done, based on his explanation, the party would then have to decide whether or not they should let him go, or perhaps they should put some sanctions, uh, they, should, they should sanction him for, for what he did. So to clarify, Ras Mubarak says that the position he is uh, pushing is the position of his constituents. But the political party he represents say that he has erred by espousing the position of his constituents and are going to hear his side of the story and possibly sanction him for it. Exactly. So he's gone contrary to the party's position. And could you mention constituents? As far as the election is concerned, the NDC is clear in their mind that the people of Kumbungu voted for Ras Mbarak. And so, by extension, those in Kumungu, majority of them, are NDC. So if the NDC has issued a statement that they are going for a no vote, clearly, the member of parliament to represent the constituents on the ticket of the party mm. should also fall in line. He should so, be inclined to the party's position. So and from, from contrary to it, the mm. party clearly would have to sanction. So they will listen to him, and as I mentioned earlier, when he is done, the party will not take a decision. Right. And of course, when they take a decision on Rasmurak, we'll definitely communicate the information to our viewers. Right. So from, from your interaction with the party executives, it seems like their expectation is that the people of Kumbungu, since they voted for Ras Mubarak, will automatically agree with everything that the NDC uh, does. That, that appears to be the position of the party from your interactions that, with that's them? That's right, all right. Well, this is fascinating stuff. And no doubt we want you to keep us on top of it all. So we'll be coming back to you for even more. Kwesi Parker Wilson uh, reporting from the NDC headquarters where Ras Mubarak has been summoned by the party um, for expressing um, his support for the yes vote in the upcoming um, uh, referendum. Now, uh, let's bear in mind um, he is a member of the NDC, a party that has declared publicly they are support of the no vote in the upcoming referendum. They have also issued a directive to all their members of parliament um, to, to, to support the no uh, vote in all of their interactions. Now let's continue hearing from all the um, different stakeholders in this evolving matter. The NPP have also spoken about it in a press conference. Here is their general secretary, John Buidu. Nonetheless, still stretch a hand of friendship and appeal to our members or our brothers in the NDC, the second largest political party in Ghana, as at now. But they may go to Ted by the way, the way they are behaving. To come back to the consensus table and let us together do what we know to be right for Ghana. We will appeal to the NDC to put the national interest first. The MPP is fully behind the president's program and the people's desire to democratize local governance and enhance accountability at that level. We are also happy to hear the government that the government intends to continue engaging the NDC and other stakeholders to get this important exercise of strengthening governance at the grassroots fully back on track. Government is, is still not uh, relenting its effort in engaging the leadership of the NDC, irrespective of, the, of their U-10. But because they can turn, I believe that they can turn again. We also call on all patriotic citizens, including followers of NDC and other parties, to do what we all know to be right and support the Yes campaign. We call on all other institu institutional stakeholders to also reach out to the NDC, particularly the presidential candidate and his party's leadership, to come back and support a Yes vote. There's a strong school of thought that the only thing that explains the NDC's U10 is that being fully aware of the difficult constitutional requirement that at least 40% of electorate must show up and at least 75% of these who show up to vote must cast in favor before such an uh, entrenched position can be successfully amended. The NDC wants to take undue, unpatriotic, and selfish adva advantage of that. 
that they are merely playing politics by hoping to register a curious electoral victory, by actively mobilizing their supporters to vote no. Indeed, our information is that the NDC intend to use referendum as a dress rehearsal for the 2020 general elections. All right, well, let's, let's talk a bit more about this. Let's see if we can understand a bit more what exactly this whole referendum is, how it's become so contentious, and where, where you should be looking for information in order to help you come to a decision. Uh, Awala Hassan Mohammed is the executive director of NORSAC. Uh, he joins me in the studio. Now, uh, before we get into this, I want to show you something, Awala. Okay. Um, we, we put a poll on our social media. Okay. Uh, and, um, well, I had hoped we could start with that um, as we planned. Okay. Um, uh, th this poll basically is capturing whether people will vote yes or no. We put the questions of the, um, the, the referendum to okay. them. Uh, and as of yesterday, 82% uh, 80 said they would vote no. And 18% uh, said they would vote yes. Okay. But... Uh, let's put that to one side because I want the most recent figures before we, we discuss it. But let's talk about your organization and, and how you have been uh, sensitizing people uh, about this referendum. Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I think uh, NOSAC uh, is a governance organization and uh, we've been very active and solid in the northern part of Ghana. And um, we've been uh, actively involved in elections, I think, uh, from 2006 to date, and uh, so local government, uh, local government, uh, level elections, and then uh, presidential and parliamentary, we've been actively uh, involved, uh, and um, normally we produce uh, our report and try to make it public, just to make sure that we build our democracy. Mm. So we've been actively involved in this, and uh, uh, we understand the issues. And for me, I think what is happening now is good for our democracy. We just have to be more tolerant. We have to promote uh, dialogue. We have to make sure that especially the, the ruling party should uh, uh, stretch its hands to the opposition party. Mm. They should be um, very clear with their message to the opposition party. We, we need the opposition party. Mm. We want to move as a country. We don't want a policy that will be seen to be like that. This is for MPP a special an exercise like this. So help me understand, okay. why do you say you need the opposition party? Uh, I mean, the opposition party hasn't said they won't participate, have they? No. I so think, uh, what, what seems to be the, when you say you need them, what do you need them to do? This is a national exercise. Government has a position. We have other uh, groups and individuals who also think that government position is not right. And so for me, I think that we need to uh, dialogue. We need to have more uh, consultations and then uh, look at oh, why are we going for this referendum? Mm. Because one thing is very clear. Almost uh, all citizens you engage, you talk to, they tell you that we want to be electing our leaders. Mm -hmm. So that is very clear. The how for me is just a, a mm. it's just an issue. And uh, until recently, I think NDC was also very clear. So they wanted to. Uh, or even as far back as uh, 2009, mm -hmm. they've been very consistent. They also want to elect uh, our MMDC. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is how do we elect them? Yep. And some of us, are, we congratulated the president when he said, well, I want us to be electing our MMDCs. Mm -hmm. But the thing is on partisan basis. And that is where the difficulty is. Mm -hmm. And Nosaka as an organization, we have not taken a position. What we believe is that uh, it's important for us to get citizens to understand implications for any of the outcome. If we go for yes, what are the implications? What would happen at the local level? If we decide to go for no, what would be the implications? Mm -hmm. We need to get citizens to know this. Mm -hmm. And that will um, get them to take uh, so, so, so what the president promised at the beginning of this year is that by the end of this year, we will be able to elect our MMDCEs. This referendum is not about electing our MMDCEs no. at all. In fact, if we want to elect our MMDCs, it's Parliament okay. that needs to um, amend uh, two, four, three, one. two, four, three, one. one. Okay. Uh, why are we not doing that first? After which, we can ask the question of how. So first, answer what. 
okay. then, then come to answer how. Okay. Is that not a better way of going about it? Well, it's just one of the ways to go about it. And that's why some of us, uh, personally, I think that um, the ministry hasn't given us a package about this election. We needed a full package for this election. Mm -hmm. If you see, look, Parliament has a role to play. And that is just amending Article 2431. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're also looking at 55.3 which is an entrenched clause and demands that we go for a referendum to decide whether political parties should be uh, uh, should now sponsor should now participate mm -hmm. in local level uh, uh, elections but what help I me think understand should have done this help me understand when did that question even become important because from the beginning the whole discourse was about making it possible for mmdc's to be elected okay uh, uh, at what point does somebody suddenly say oh it, it, well, it, it ought to be partisan, but we, the, the, the uh, Constitution doesn't allow that. Let's see if the people will allow us to amend the Constitution. Why did it become important? Well, uh, at a point, some people felt like if we are going to break the winner-takes-all syndrome, then we must get political parties involved so that we, have, uh, we can have the smaller parties or even opposition parties uh, managing some district assembly. So in that case, we were breaking the winner-takes-all. Then I just also feel like if we get political parties to be involved in this, we are going to get citizens expressing interest in the local level elections. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they said, oh, from, uh, uh, what is it, uh, even as far back in 1998 to date, we've not successfully recorded over 42% uh, mm -hmm. uh, voter turnout at the local level uh, elections. So if we get political parties involved, it's going to make sure that uh, people uh, mm -hmm. uh, get involved. Then I just also think that, uh, look, if we get political parties to be involved at the local level, then uh, we, we will be able to share resources and get uh, our leaders, uh, uh, what I'll get our, our leaders overwhelmingly endorsed by I mean, political parties with uh, numbers, with strength, with uh, I mean, majority kind of uh, representation at that level. So these are some of the reasons why those who think that uh, political parties should be allowed to get involved in uh, dating. But of course, there are others who think that, look, if we go that way, we are going to polarize and divide our communities. We I mean, OK, I, I, I get that. And I, I'm so sorry to cut in at this point, because that is a very often repeated yes. uh, argument. I don't even want to go as far as the arguments. Okay. I want to just look at practicality. Okay. So help me through this. Okay. Um, so uh, the, 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 those who want uh, partisan involvement at that level, okay. they're saying two things. Okay. They're saying, one, um, we need partisan involvement so that um, uh, we can break winner takes all. Absolutely. Two, we need partisan involvement so that more people will actually be pay attention to it and okay. come out to vote. Because yes. when it's partisan, people care more. Yes. So reason one, winner takes all. Yes. Are we saying that if MMDCs are elected on a non-partisan basis, that will not break winner takes all? I mean, if they are not partisan, mm -hmm. how can they be uh, controlled by the Let's look presidency? at what, what just happened, uh, what you just reported, uh, the issue of uh, Ras Mubarak. Mm -hmm. If he was just con he was an independent candidate, mm -hmm. Do you think uh, his party was someone him? There would be no party. There would be no party. Mm -hmm. So if we go that way, we decide not mm -hmm. to align to political parties. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, uh, any uh, metro municipal chief executive does something. Mm -hmm. No political party will have interest in that. And mm -hmm. no party can just say, uh, summon him to answer why he took a particular uh, so, position. So it would break winner takes all. It will. So okay. that is the way people are looking at it. Let's come but back and talk a bit more about that in a moment. Okay. Because I'm hearing more updates okay. from uh, <laughs> the NDC headquarters where yeah. Ras Mubarak was <coughs> summoned uh, to explain <coughs> his support of the yes boot. Um, when uh, the party had instructed all MPs uh, not uh, to support no. Uh, 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 Parker Wilson is there. Uh, so, Parker, tell me what, what the latest is. Okay, so, could you? we, we know that um, the member of parliament, Russell Bach, um, is still with the um, Fed, and just a while ago, I received a statement from him Russell Barak, um, and I want to read the big thing mm. just for our viewers, and it says that upon a sober reflection and advice from very distinguished senior members, especially the parliamentary leadership, 
I have come to the conclusion that it is improper to deviate from my party's official position for a no vote in the upcoming referendum on Article 553 of Constitution. I recognize that my personal position must be sub subsumed under the broader interest of the party. I therefore decide to uphold the party's position for a no vote on the matter. Signed, Rasmbara, Parliament House Accra, November 19, 2019. So it's an indication that he has withdrawn his earlier position of campaigning for a yes vote and now fully backs the decision of the, the, the party, which is a no vote in the upcoming referendum. We've not heard from Rasmbara himself, but of course, this is a statement signed by him indicating that he has shown remorse, he has backtracked, he has apologized, and then he has now fallen in line with the party's position on this matter. So, Kojo, when we get him, we speak to him and ask him the reasons for his uh, uh, withdrawal of his earlier position on this matter. It will be very interesting to hear your conversation with him, and no doubt you will be asking him whether he represents his people or his party. This is an important question at this point in the proceedings. Thank you so much, Gracie Parker Wilson. We'll come back to you once you have the chance to speak to, um, to Ras Mubarak. Uh, some would say this is perhaps the strongest argument for a no vote yet. Okay. That, in fact, representatives who are elected on partisan basis cannot represent they cannot represent the people who voted for them okay. because they are slaves to their party. Yes, and that is why those who are saying no, the group campaigning for no, are saying that uh, introducing multi-party activities at the local level would only make political parties more powerful. It will make leaders uh, accountable to political parties, then accounting to citizens. Mm. And for which reason they are saying no, we should just leave it as it is now. Mm. But on the other hand, yeah. we have this argument about interest, you know, and the, and the fact remains, yeah. nothing excites Ghanaians apart from football. <laughs> nothing <laughs> excites Ghanaians more than a partisan debate or okay. a partisan contest. Mm -hmm. And this would be a way of getting more people involved in the election of local representatives. Is that not a good argument for for a yes vote? Yes. Again, that is for one of the strongest points I can, I can say uh, for the yes people is what you have just raised. Because they believe that, uh, look, if we go for yes, we are going to make our local government uh, elections very attractive. We are going to have decent people contesting. We are going to have like, I mean, the primaries and other activities will energize the process and will let people come out with alternatives. And so it wouldn't just be a matter of uh, um, just uh, uh, having Kojo there, but Kojo will have to really convince the people why they must, uh, uh, they must give him the law. Mm. And so you come out with uh, alternatives and then uh, uh, we we'll have many more of that at the local le level. So for those who think that uh, it must be yes, they also have points. And remember I told you that, uh, look, all that is happening now for me is good for our democracy. Uh, what we just have to do is to be more accommodative, to be more tolerant, to allow people to get to know. Let's give out information. Kojo, one of the reasons why we are here is because I think the local government ministry hasn't helped that much. Because if you are telling people, go and vote for yes, and after that, we will come out, we will address other consequential amendments. For example, people want to know, now, what will now be the tenor of our leaders? Yeah, I, I don't know whether you're getting it. They, want, with you. they have interest. What will be the... Yeah, how yeah. long will leaders uh, be in office? Mm -hmm. How will our leader, if we elect our MMDC, how, will he, uh, how can we get him or her out of office? And the president just said, because that uh, aspect has not also been addressed. Mm -hmm. So what we needed to do was to put up a complete package and to tell, if we amend this, these are some other clause that we are going to address to make the place uh, or to make the system better. 
Yeah. But if we just say, let's go for years, and after years, we will address other things. Mm -hmm. No, it will create fear. And then right. citizens, to some extent, there's that kind of mistrust yeah. between citizens and our political leaders. Mm -hmm. So I think that there should have been a complete package. I know Parliament talking about Article uh, 243, talking about Article 248, uh, Article uh, 254, and others that, oh, they are going to work on mm -hmm. it. But we should have just given highlights. So that when we are campaigning for years, then we will introduce all this right. to the conversation. Okay, now I have a final question for you in a moment. But mm. first, uh, that poll I promised to show you. Okay. This is what we uh, did on Facebook. Okay. We put up this poll. Uh, the question was simple. Which will you vote for? Okay. A, allow political parties to participate in local government elections. Mm -hmm. B, not allow political parties to participate in local government elections. Yes. Simple, straightforward. Yeah. And B is leading by a country mile. 82%. Okay, out of 6,500 votes, 82% of them say no, they will not allow political parties to participate in local government elections. 18% say yes, they will allow political parties to participate in local government elections. Now, let's be fair, this is a, a social media um, poll, which we invite you to participate in, by yeah. the way. The more of you uh, go there and vote, the more scientific. Uh, or the closer to scientific this poll can get. Okay. Um, so please, go there, go there, and, uh, cast your vote, and uh, tell us what you think. But you see, it, it is interesting because this poll is starkly contrasted mm -hmm. by the Institute of Local Government Studies uh, poll, which mm -hmm. they, they announced yesterday, and they had some very interesting mm -hmm. results. For example, they said that out of the people they spoke to, 74% uh, understood what this referendum is about, okay. first of all. Mm -hmm. And out of that 74%, over half of them, 55%, could even tell you which law or which uh, uh, um, article of the Constitution this, constitution, this um, referendum is seeking to amend. I mean. Is that the feeling you get on the ground? where you are. Do people understand it to that extent? They, they even get which law is being... In fact, do they even know what this referendum is about? Yes, I, I turned on to uh, recently, I turned if you about two weeks back, uh, even uh, talking to professional bodies, you get the impression that uh, they do not understand the process and they do not know what we are talking about. And even some government officials, they were mm. talking about, uh, we need a referendum to elect our MMDC. But there's nothing to do with that. There's, there's, uh, there's nothing like that. Mm. If we want to elect our MMDC, we don't need any referendum. Mm. Yes. So I'm happy if um, the polls they said they have conducted, if we are getting this information out there for me, I think it's good. But, but is that want, your feeling, no, I, I speaking to people on the ground? Uh, what I see on the ground is contrary to uh, this uh, finding uh, from the of Local Government Study. I think as such, um, at all, not, we conducted a survey when we were discussing it, and we realized that, uh, in fact, uh, for 80 people, 80 percent of people we interacted with didn't even know that there would be a referendum. They, they didn't even know that there, uh, there would be a referendum. So if at this particular point we now feel like there are others or there are many more people who think that, uh, or we believe and really know the particular article that we are going to have a referendum on, mm -hmm. for me it's good, but I doubt if that is the situation mm -hmm. now. All right, so this is the question I, I, I said I would ask you. Yeah. At this point, bearing in mind that the objective here is to elect MMDCs or to make them electable. Yes. That's the objective. That's oh. what the nation completely agrees on. We want oh, that. Oh, yeah. President has promised that. Okay. Bearing in mind that this um, referendum has nothing to do with that. N nothing. Okay. Nothing to do Absolutely. with MMDCs. Yeah. What do you think of those who are calling for it to be scrapped? Well, I, think, uh, I made that call, and uh, I, think, uh, I had a number of people uh, calling and to find out why I've taken that position. Because I said, uh, well, looking at things like uh, the voices of citizens are very strong and loud at this particular point, and we need to have reflections and to ask ourselves whether we can put this particular exercise on hold um, and just make sure that we focus on the, on amending the 2431 to have uh, these elections uh, come up. Mm. So it's one of the things that I've also considered. It's a call that I've made. It doesn't reflect the position of my organization for now. But I think that uh, um, uh, it's one of the things that uh, our leader, the president, has to do now. 
or one other thing that maybe he has to look at if they still want to move ahead with this particular process i think uh, there is a need for our president to engage more we still have time mm. we still have engage time. who well one i think that the main opposition party we have the flag bearer for the main opposition party mm. we can still engage we can engage other stakeholders, the National House of Chiefs, uh, they have spoken. We need to engage them. I'm mm. sure if we are able to convince them, because all these people, they want good for our nation. And they think that, look, if we make it partisan, we will not get the best out of, uh, mm. out of it. And then those who are for years think that, look, let's just do it that way, because that will be the best for our country. Uh, for me, I think that we need to really uh, have more dialogue and it's one of the ways that uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can succeed. Mm. Well, I want to thank you very yeah, much for, yeah. for your contribution, Mr. Awal mm -hmm. Al Hassan Mohammed. You're the executive director of NORSAC. We appreciate your presence.